Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Skyford the Ascension. So, today with us, we have me, Do. sorry for scooting off screen. My producer's going to kill me. We have Streak. Sir? We have our mighty guild leader, Ganamel. How you doing? And nothing could be complete without Stunner. <laughs> 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 so you know this was actually our first week of actual live open beta you know the previous week was our early release and stuff and so stunner's here actually to give us a, a fresh perspective on a brand new player didn't play cbt anything didn't play the early access and so he's going to give some great insight for those of you thinking about coming in even though you're coming a little later than the rest of us so Stunner, what was your first impression when you started playing? Um, well, the game seemed a little instance-based, but uh, the graphics were very high-tuned. So I kind of had to mess with my graphics settings, and then when I figured out that they could get higher, I was thoroughly impressed with the fact that uh, it seemed Guild Wars 2-ish, but better graphics. Um, I liked the gameplay, the action was... Uh, I don't know how you put it other than it was action based it was fast the grouping system is solid um, as far as group goes uh, a few of the other things I think they're working on but it so far it seemed like it was a unique experience from the get go I like the lore it wasn't a 20 minute uh, video clip for every conversation it was like a few seconds of Oh, this is what you're doing. Off the next step, you go. Give me that fast-paced action. That's what it's all about for me at the moment. So it was, it was thrilling. Okay. So, question for you though: Since you came in a week behind the people who were playing in CBT and everything, yeah, Stunner, are you playing a dude or a chick? I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, right now, uh, I made it a chick this time around, just because one of my buddies, my older brother, he he was. He hates it when I play a chick. But it's called, the character's name is actually Stunner Sir. So there's no mistaking it. I'm a dude. But uh, I made it a chick just for now, just to anger him. He's very un unhappy with the fact that I made a chick. So, but during character creation, you're telling me that the physics within character creation had no emphasis on why you created a chick? Am I allowed to even talk about that on stream? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you I mean, know it's true. I mean, physics plays a big part in character creation and movement yes. and everything else. There was parts of the character creation that made every man look at it and go, wow. I'm a little boy again. <laughs> that was definitely there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the big thing you talked about, the grouping and stuff, you know, coming in a week later and everyone else, did you have any issues getting groups or anything? Not at all. It was actually pleasantly surprising that you can get groups so fast. Not only that, but I wish they wouldn't have a cap just for the fact that if more people were gods, I could just summon them all the time and have them run me through the dang dungeon <laughs> like I did Deuce. <laughs> hey, you got to admit, we had fun. We, we died did. a few times, but poor Caitlin. Yes. I think she was going to have a heart attack on us. <laughs> so, Gandamel. We got a patch coming out tomorrow. You care to delve into that a little bit? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, yeah, I, was just, I, I keep reading stuff uh, switching between windows here. But um, it, in the short of it, they have no ETA on the portal chat being activated. Um, it's still going to be down. Uh, they believe the in-game chats for group and guild are tied to the same problem, so they have no ETA on that. They are confirming, yes, it's only going to be a three-hour maintenance. They have no expectation of it being any longer. They just say, yes, they have a lot of future stuff in store for the next updates and patches. They are they're going to check everything out closely before the servers are back up because, you know, everybody is guesstimating that three-hour time to be kind of squeamish because that's pretty short for our maintenance. And then uh, controller support still being worked on. They're not going to make any removals or any changes to controller support right now. And they're hoping that the uh, the patch this time should help with some of the service stability. 
other than that, that's all they have for a little short and sweet on the past tomorrow. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's still very early. So, I don't ex expect for the little fixes and stuff. Yeah, it would be nice if they fixed, you know, Pantheon chat and stuff. I mean, but we do have team speak, and it's definitely a way to go. I do like the fact we can turn off channels because this being a free-to-play game, it does seem like we have our normal pleasant characters in realm chat, area chat, whatever. So, besides Stunner, I know I'm playing a female character. Is Do we even have a male character in this stream today? Streak, you playing me. a male? I'm um, playing a male. I was until I got picked on about my choice of clothing, so I switched. <laughs> <laughs> you had a sex change? You, so you could actually change your sex? Yes, I was a male wearing some kind of cardigan world sweater, and I got picked on. So I changed to a female just so I could tease all the guys I was running around with in groups. You can do that once every 14 days, right? Um, well, this was my first one, so I don't know what the limit is. This was first I used that little character in the research area to change my appearance, so I don't know what the cooldown cost or anything is. I, I know that when you first come in, they actually give you one free one that you can pretty much change yeah. everything and anything. Um, after that, I don't... I don't know exactly how much you can change, but yes, it is on a two-week cooldown. Oh, okay. So maybe I'm gonna be a chick for the next two weeks then. <laughs> At least. <laughs> you know, there was another change that really has to do with within the grievance organization, and that was, didn't the embassy move to guild, Gandamel? That is correct. We are now officially a full guild in the grievance organization. That's thanks to everybody that's been playing in early access this first week of open. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be where we are now. So, special thanks to everybody. Keep up the good work. You got any promotions you want to announce? Uh, yeah, um, we did. Uh, Novatech gladly accepted the position of executive officer. So Sucker. right, So right now we have uh, <laughs> myself, Caitlin, as the recruiting officer. Novatech's the executive officer. And, of course, we're always looking for those people to step up that want to be interested in the office position, and we're also going to be in a market for a warlord as we hit the higher end PvP content and things like that. So, Strig, weren't you telling me earlier that they actually changed our reset time for our reset tomorrow? That is the word that we have heard is that the reset time is now supposed to be 9 p.m. Pacific time. Tonight. Tonight, which would be midnight on the East Coast, which is where I am. So um, that is what we're all waiting to find out is if that is actually valid information or not. Now, from what I was checking out and what I was hearing from other people was, didn't they say that that was actually 5 a.m. GMT or Russia time or whatever, which is where the game is? And that's, or is that just, you know, like urban legend kind of thing? <laughs> You know, that's that is what I I was in the channel. I heard the same exact thing, but you know, I I swear they were I thought they were behind us, not ahead of us. So I I was kind of surprised by that, but you know what? I I, I don't get pat beyond Pacific and Central and Eastern. I I'm not really sure on that one. Well, anyway, we'll find out I guess at midnight <laughs> Eastern time. For those of us who are still up, I won't be. I have to get up early for work tomorrow, but hey. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure Striegel will let me know in the morning. I might, I might just stay up just to find out for sure when the reset timer is, but then quickly go to bed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say, I have that kind of freedom, so I mean, I could easily be the guinea pig and stay up and see, because it's not like I have to be in early. <laughs> So. Well now, Gan, when when's the uh, when's the patch going through? You you mentioned a maintenance. Yeah, the maintenance is going down. It's going to be uh, I was just on the page. I think it's six a.m. Pacific our time, and then down for three hours. Could be three a.m. I could go back to that page real quick. I just had it up. So, yeah, that kind of is weird compared to when they're actually going to reset the time. Then why would they reset the time? Then three hours later, bring it down for patch. So, yeah. I mean, it is still in the early starts of the game and I guess we'll just kind of have to feel it out I like that answer August you have to multiply the square root of the GMT <laughs> by the color <laughs> now here's uh, the thing though color what here's the thing 
How do you know what periwinkle is, August? Oh. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> everybody, everybody makes fun of me because I've been calling it periwinkle. It's periwinkle shield in your construction missions. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, as, as everybody's sitting here in this channel, we have all capped again this week. You know, stunner for the first time capped this week. So, question is, how has your class progression been going? Streak? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Why so, well, Streak? I, I should say that. I started with the gunner, and, and I did manage to complete the entire gunner tree. So, I've got the, the, the ultimate symbol there for the gunner. So, he's all fleshed out. But my goal was really to kind of work towards the monk. And I found as I was working towards the monk, you know, this pretty little talent or up here and this one I'm going near and, oh, I'm getting close to the, I'm going past the, uh, what is the necromancer? And that sounded kind of cool. So, you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, ADHD type things. I'm like, oh, wait, no, no, this over here, no, this over here. And I'm, I'm finding my stretch of time to my monk is getting wider and wider so I calculated it out, and I'm about 10,250 gems short of the monk. So I'm hoping that the cap this week is less than that, so that I don't have to make a decision whether to push for the monk. I can just say, it's going to take me two weeks, so not worry about it. Well, you know, one thing I've noticed, you know, just looking at the Ascension Tree and everything, and I, I don't know how everybody else is feeling about this, but it is so easy to squirrel and do something else totally from what you're planning. Because it's like, ooh, new shiny, ooh, new shiny. <laughs> so, I mean, and it's like, oh, if I get this greatness, I can take up my temple up another level. Ooh, if I get this, I can, you know, wear better gear. Ooh, if I do this, I have more health. Ooh, if I do this, and then you're just running around in circles, and now you haven't done your plan at all. So, I mean, it's very easy to squirrel within that tree. Stun, are you with us? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> you look like you lost left field stunner come on man i know you're luck i know you're a wild crazy guy i'm trying to keep up with all that information it's an overload <laughs> yeah it's that was the next thing i was gonna say you know how is it trying to absorb all this in you know because we're just like spouting information spouting information spouting information and these are all things you know that we've been doing over time and stuff and yes squirrels go nuts and trees you are true august <laughs> but you know it's one of those things that are you able to keep up is it too much to absorb in or um thankfully with the uh amounts of different mmos that we've played over the years no it's not that hard for me but i could imagine for someone who uh was coming in and never messed with like a Neverwinter uh, crafting system, which is what I uh, devour out of this one. Um, that kind of style, or you know, play Guild Wars 2 for understanding that you don't necessarily need a healer if you play the mechanics right. Um, uh, those kind of things, and understanding the class tree, which to me reminds me a lot of. Uh, oh, Path of Exile. Path of Exile. I mean, game, <laughs> games of those natures coming together, kind of, you, you see the little bits of it and you, you recognize it and you're like, oh, well, that makes sense. It reminds me of this. If someone who hasn't played any of those, putting this game together to them, I could see them getting lost real fast, though. And so it's nice that when you walk into the grievance lobby, uh, you just ask a question. And we've had plenty of people asking the same question over, but everyone's thoroughly happy to answer them. So that was really cool. Yeah, August, I would actually have to agree with that. This game, the instant sync, does actually remind me of Warframe a lot. Warframe is a cool game, by the way. Totally different genre, though. It's a shooter. It's probably one of the oh. first shooters I've ever really enjoyed. But you know, I squirrel. I was really worried about the instant sync when I first started. Just to sidetrack real quick. But I got to tell you, a lot of these MMOs, man, you shoot 
from zero to 50 to try to hit max level so that you can do dungeons and, and those types of things with your guild mates. And these instances kind of remind me of like little mini dungeons, but through the whole entire leveling process, if you get three or five people in those groups, it's just like running instant dungeon after dungeon after dungeon. So I think it's really cool the way they did it. You know, one thing I actually enjoy about that is every time you run an instance with somebody else, though, it changes the the dynamic of the fight. For example, yeah. you know, for a long time, we were tank challenge. So not fighting with a tank, you know, I, I remember Streak. How many times are you gunner tanking with me in group? <laughs> Well, that was after you got the Slayer, where you had like one left click button over and over again, yeah. with no skills. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's true. You you have to learn to adapt and stuff. And I'll tell you, one nice thing about this is is you know with the ability to switch classes and everything. Once we start progressing through, we'll have enough different classes where we can just fill any group we really want to. You know, whether it's a range DPS needed, whether it's a melee DPS, whether it's a tank, or whether it's a support. But I will tell you this one thing that I've noticed, to not go into a five-person dungeon without a tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is like beating your head against a brick wall. Because all they do is ping-pong around and start destroying all the DPS. And, you know... We actually got our first five people able to go into the five-person dungeon, and we went in. We didn't have a tank, and we didn't even get to the first boss. So we were at level, so it's not like we were overpowering or anything, and yeah, it was just ugly. So classes are important. Excuse me, roles are important in this game. Um, I'll tell you... Also, having multiple different classes within the roles for like your DPS makes a huge difference because each class offers a different a different buffs and everything else, just like a lot of other games. It's just in a really peculiar style with the ultimates and everything else that go through. Um, so, Ganymel, how's the Pantheon progressing? We are actually filling faster than we can make spots. I mean, we are just getting members left and right, new members that want to get in. Um, we are trying to compensate people as fast as possible. I mean, everybody's doing their part by accelerating missions when they can, if they have the credits for it. We're currently just over 60 members right now, I believe, around 61, 64 mark, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I don't have the game up right now to give you an exact number, but I know it's right around there. We're just over 50% with the next expansion. I mean, we're just pushing members left and right. I foresee us hitting the 100 mark by by the end of the month. And, you know, everybody knows 100 is kind of that magic number. So if we get 100 people at God for them, we can start pushing all the Pantheon Wars and then some of the higher end content as we open up the progressive buildings, which we've already got one of the hard ones out of the way. We've already opened up the academy and got the power unit going. So, so what, is that, what does that actually do? For every of the higher end buildings, you know, the distortion analyzer, the uh, the forts and things like that, they require a certain power consumption and you have to have that power unit to supply power for those buildings to even be activated. So what's the advantage of having a larger guild versus a, excuse me, larger pantheon versus a smaller pantheon? Well, one for power consumption because like there's a thing you can build called a converter to where it can take your members prestige and convert it into power so that way we don't have to they keep building and building building power units we can just convert everybody's prestige into a power and gives us more usage or whatever to consume for the other buildings also the larger your pantheon is like say we need 2400 construction points if we got 200 members we can create that we can finish that building in a day based on the eight hour reset timer of the ADEP missions Versus a smaller Pantheon might only have 25 members. It might take them five days to create the same building. Okay. That's interesting. Now, w would a small Pantheon be viable in this game, though? It would. I mean, it's just like everything else in this game. I mean, you don't have to pay to win and all that kind of stuff. A smaller Pantheon can get to everything these larger Pantheons are doing, with the exception of Pantheon Wars, because that requires 100 people to have unlocked Divine Notes to even be eligible for the Pantheon Wars. But all the invasions, the raids, the anomalies, all that kind of stuff available even to the smaller pantheons. It just takes them longer to get there because they don't they can't unlock the stuff as fast. Okay, so you know, we know we have the Pantheon and how that grows, and that's that's 
the quote unquote guild for this game. But you have your own personal guild per se, and that's called an order in this game. Stunner, do you even know what the order is? Yeah, I know what the order is. Thanks. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to pick on you, but you know, you being <laughs> what you've been in the game for four hey, days now? I only figured it out yesterday, so yeah. But Caitlin pretty much broke it down for me. Okay, so what's the advantage of the order in your perspective, Stunner? A lot more prestige. How? By having more followers in the order. More followers bigger order, more temples, give me more stamina, which gives me more hit points, which gives me more might as well, which gives me more power. <laughs> I'm guessing from the might, if I'm wrong on that, tell me now. Well, breaking it down a little bit from somebody who's actually been crushing my order, <laughs> and Streak <laughs> likes to call it, say I have false prestige. <sighs> I'm just Swapping. jealous, man. I'm just jealous. I agree got with that. Way too much money, man. <laughs> I will tell you this, I've spent approximately 15 million credits in my order, but with nine this... 9 million yesterday. Huh? It was 9 million yesterday, you spent more? Yes, I've spent more. Lord. The, what? Minute, he, the minute he gets greatness, he ups <laughs> it to the max. Wow. <laughs> yes. So breaking down the order real quick, you have adepts. Adepts are your followers and they, they help give you power and stuff in the lore of the game. What adepts really do is they run missions for you in this game. Kind of like the garrison in WoW and stuff like that. So you're sending them out doing missions. Well, the, one of the missions is the adepts go out and they actually bring you back more followers. So the more followers you have, the higher level of your order. Okay, so why is the order level important? Because the higher level of order equals more provinces. More provinces, which is land means more temples. Now these temples is what Stunner's alluding to. And right now I have seven of eight temples unlocked. Okay? And they're at level 14, which is the max because of greatness. Greatness is the limiter that stops me from going just total nuts on my order. But coming out of this, out of my temples, I'm picking up about almost little over 5,000 prestige, which is why Streak says I have a Ash. false prestige. <laughs> okay? But in this, I'm picking up 5,000 might. I'm picking up about 1,000 stamina, like 3.2% crit chance, 1.2% accuracy, a couple other things. But I'm getting 56% to my max health which shoots my max health up to over almost 50k. Now, why is that important to me? There is no healer in this game. <laughs> so, with no healer in this game, health is important to me. Plus, I'm a slayer. I like to be right in on top of the boss. And there's lots of little... He pukes all over the place and everything, so I normally take damage from his, from his bad stuff in the process. So, that's why I upped my order. Now... What's the downfall of that? It's very hard to find a group. Come on, and, news. And you, you know, upped your order because you wanted that prestige. That's why you upped the order. Because you were sitting out there on all that cash saying, what am I going to do with this money? <laughs> we call that something of a sort of an EP. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. And I'll tell you, it bothered me first the, the pre-release week. Because I was number three in prestige. <clears throat> Deuce don't like being number three in anything. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Corwin and Sarah had me, and I could not catch them week one. You know, there was a couple glitches that allowed Corwin to get all his rewards early. And so he jetted up in front of me and Sarah, and then Sarah was just out reaching me. Every time I'd jump up, he'd jump up and stuff, and I just couldn't catch him. So I decided on week two, forget trying to unlock anything. Just go for prestige. And did I go for prestige? I'm sitting just short of 14k prestige now. But the problem is now, there's special items that drop from certain, you know, adventures and stuff. Whether it be PvP, whether it be five-person dungeon, or something. So, my problem is, is my stuff keeps hitting PvP. Now, for me to run a PvP mission, 
I have to have other PvP within my prestige bracket queue up at the exact same time as me. There's nobody doing it. There's prob- There's people higher than me, actually, and stuff. But the chance of 20 people in my prestige bracket queuing up for PvP at the same time is slim and none. So I'm actually falling behind <laughs> in a couple things because of that. While the other people who are leveling normal, yes, three guys, I know, I know, I know. And they make fun of me. They're like, you did this to yourself, Deuce. And I'm like, hey, but I still have the highest prestige. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's what Streak's making fun of me, though, is because I'm a PvPer and I can't PvP. It's so okay. It's fine. You can continue on your path because it just makes it easier for me to kill a dungeon. <laughs> yeah, you're just lucky there's no dueling in this game. <laughs> oh, but there is. There is. How is there dueling? Go into an open region, and you can duel anybody out there. Oh, yep. Lord, here we go. Stunner, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll tell you, it, you know, me and Stunner have history from other games, and I love picking on Stunner. He's like, but you're going to kill me. I said, I don't care. It's fun. Let's go. I was, I had no gear on on one of my characters just about. It was like level six gear, and he's like max level. He's like, let's duel. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. So it's okay, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I touched on it a little bit, and so jumping prestige really high kind of hurts the grouping prospects, just as being behind does too. So, you know, you, you kind of want to stay in the middle of the pack from what I've seen for most of those without egos and I'll tell you I was very happy today I did a test Streak is now back within my prestige range there is actually the top five (laughs) the top five are actually all in the range of me so hopefully tomorrow before I go crazy again we'll run a dungeon and I'll actually get to get something for once (laughs) but you know half the fun actually is helping out your fellow, you know, Pantheon members. And it was like I had somebody yesterday and didn't ask for any help, and I was like, what's your prestige? And they're like, 1,400. I'm like, do you want some help? Do you want some help? Come on. I mean, this is one of those weird games. Today, people were arguing, fighting to help people because somebody wanted to run a three-person instance and, like, eight people volunteered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but you know it's end of the week, and people are looking for things to do and make sure that everybody's maxed out. And that's the wonderful thing about you know the teamwork within this game and stuff because we know we don't want to leave anybody behind. So, Strig, your thoughts on that? Well, you know it's it's typical for grievance, regardless, to to go out of their way to help their members so i mean that is really not out of the ordinary for us but i I can say by playing this game i have run i I can't even count how many five-man dungeons that that i was way over prestige of the rest of the people and was again it 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 really doesn't matter i i tell you running these five mans with the with the guild is just it's a lot of fun we have a really really good time uh as far as loot goes you know (sighs) I look at it this way, you know, if I, if I did get any loot, I'd probably be out-leveling it in a couple days anyways, the next week when we get our new cap and we fly up to the next tier, all that stuff's going to be replaced anyways, so why bother? Most of the stuff you're disassembling anyways, so I really don't care about the loot. I just think it's it's a heck of a lot of fun to be in a game where you're not you're not starting off the game where everybody, oh, I'm at 50, try, I'm trying to get to 50, and I'm at 30, and you're at 10, and I don't want to slow down. This game, the way it's designed with the caps and then the instances and, and the, like being like like I said, mini dungeons, it's just a hell of a lot of fun. So it's great when people say, I need help, and, and everybody's like, pick me, pick me. You know, I want to go do something with somebody. I don't want to solo. So it's really cool. I'd have to agree. And, you know, I think that goes back to what Stutter said earlier. He didn't have any problems finding groups because even outside of our organization, I think people are like that. They're like, I would rather run a pug than solo in this game. It's not that you can't solo. It's just funner with other people. Oh, yeah. I chose to solo one of my missions, and the boss was 
more tedious. And I was like, you know what? I'm out. Just quit out, came back with the group, and just ran through it. I was like, yeah, that was much better. Let's work I had to do. Were you playing your night at the time? No, I was playing the Cryomancer. I wasn't playing the night. No, I was asking because, you know, especially early, the tank classes are a bit hard to solo. Yeah. But I'll tell you, in groups, everybody loves you. Oh, yeah. You know, feel the love as a tank in this game. And except for me, which I can't seem to get no love as a slayer, you know, <laughs> but. Um, well, I did find out the, something for you on that while we're go here. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So the tanks have it pretty easy, at least the knight does. With one talent, that 400% to threat, that's why I was pulling it off you. It's not when I'm in defensive stance. It's no matter what I do in all stances. Yeah. So that's why one poke was pulling your mob that you did like 10,000 damage to off you. But, you know, it's funny, and, and thank you, because I was wondering how... I mean, come on, I have five times your prestige. You're poking at one time. I'm clobbering this thing for 50K. Yeah, my 100 damage... damage. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, what I'm saying is Slayers can't feel love because one thing I hope they actually change is anytime we do a backstab, which is a teleport, or go stealth, everyone loses us as target, including our own group. So, you know, our light binders and alchemists who are trying to to throw us buffs and everything can't do it because they can't target us because slayers are just bebopping all over the place so well it's called stealth thanks Gan <laughs> <laughs> he just stealth that right in there so so what you want me to backstab my own party too come on can I, <laughs> can I get some love it's not like you blow up with my landmines why can't I get some buffy love because <laughs> the buffs in this game are awesome Yes, very much so. Okay, so let's talk about raising the limits. You touched on a little bit earlier. Gan, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, I, if anybody can read chat still up there, um, I linked the post because a lot of people have been talking about the caps. You know, They were initially saying it's going to be 500 extended each week. So like this week was 7,500. It's going to be 8,000. And a lot of people were just complaining because, you know, we were hitting these caps, especially the premium players, in a couple of days, some of us in one day, depending on our play times. <laughs> uh, the community manager here linked that we will see them increase more, I guess, percentage-wise versus a static number. Like he was saying uh, last week that there's going to be, this following week should be closer to 10K instead of the 7,500. I think it was kind of testing the waters by saying, hey, it's going to be 500 each week. And I think that, you know, granted we're still in open beta. They were testing the waters to see how fast people are hitting these caps, even the free-to-plays versus the premiums and things like that. And I think they're seeing it pretty static that people are capping very early, even in the free-to-play category. So I honestly think they're looking at raising the caps more and more because as these nodes get more and more expensive, you know, if the cap's only 7,500, we might only lock 12 nodes that week instead of 20 or 30 that we need to unlock to get some certain classes that are way down the trees that we want to play. If you didn't buy the collector's edition or Fado's packs or things of that nature, so like that post says, you know, 10k might be this week, and it might be the cap might be 1250 the following week or 17,000 or something like that. This is the push as these nodes get more and more expensive. Okay, so we touched on the five-person dungeons a little bit, but I kind of want to go more in depth on that because this is like. The leveling why we're in the leveling process and I'm calling leveling process everything before God form and always remember in this game if somebody asks you are you a God what is your response you say yes, yes. <laughs> always say yes but you know so they've they've stated multiple times that the game changes drastically once you reach God form and stuff and I really don't want to go into what happens there because part of it's speculation part of it's what's posted but I really don't want to go into what Rush is doing there a couple months ahead of us. I'm just kind of keeping us on track of where we're going and what's in our near future and stuff. So I really don't want to go into God form that much. But five-person dungeons during the level process is the pinnacle thing to do at this point. And, you know, Stunner playing a tank, he's going to feel lots of love going into these. Okay? 
And I'll tell you, have you opened the second dungeon yet, Stunner? No. I thought you were 6K. No, remember, I'm hiding my prestige. It's all hidden because uh, keeping it away from my brother who's only at 3,500 and he's not wanting me to pass him. So he thinks I haven't passed him, but like everything's maxed. I just haven't spent anything. But the minute he like gets his prestige up, I'm just going to keep pumping it up. He's going to go like, how are you leveling? magic <laughs> but yes I'm about 6k with everything done yeah, what what has been your experience in the five person dungeon so far right now I've noticed the bet like for Marseco the first five man you open up the best composition I've seen is two support one tank two DPS it seems to make it go a lot smoother than having that single support class the trash is extremely hard compared to most of the bosses. There's a lot of really tricky pools that have large amount of the lower end DPS mobs, you know, like with the little three triangle symbol. They have like one central tank mob or one central hard static DPS mob, and then it has like all the little minion mobs. But those minion mobs can do a lot of damage quick. So it's kind of, you know, pull the main mob out, the rest of the group just AOEs them down and move on. The bosses are mediocre difficulties once, once you follow a strategy. Darren facility, very strategical, very place, <laughs> placement oriented. Like you have to stand like in an exact spot or you're going to aggro a mob that you're going to spend five minutes fighting. You got anything to add to that, Strig, in your experience in the five-person dungeons? <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We were talking about this earlier, Deuce. I, I honestly have not run... Except for that first time we tried to run a five man <laughs> without a tank, <clears throat> which was 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 really bad. Um, since then, all the five mans I have run, I have been several k per siege above. So we've kind of been blowing people through these dungeons like they're not quite as bad. But that's mostly because we're kind of really high for some of what we've been doing. Um, there is no doubt you need a tank. There's no doubt you need support. So even though there is no healing in this game, the Trinity is technically there because uh, you do need that balance. Uh, like Gan said, trash mobs are brutal. Uh, so if you try to pug and you've got everybody focusing on different mobs because they don't aren't in team speak and aren't, aren't communicating well, it, it's going to be it's going to be painful. Very very painful. It's if you go in and you're all the same prestige and you're going in to be competitive, they are a challenge. So, you want looking to forward first? to doing. Looking forward to doing one. You know, with us all on within range would be really cool. I can tell you my first experience because I didn't go with you guys. I uh, was on my cryomancer, and I sat there for about an hour in uh, the first dungeon, the five man, watching people come in. Get together, go in and try, die, leave, more people come in. Took us about an hour to get a tank who knew what he was doing and um, a, a bubbler or healer, whatever you want to consider them, to come and understand what they were doing. And then all of a sudden it turned into cakewalk and it took us about 30 minutes. I literally had to wait an hour for that many people to come in and go out. But it was like the second day when it released, so I figured I was there with the entire new crowd with me. You know, one thing that we've been testing, and when I say we, I've been running a lot with Sarah, who actually is playing a knight slash berserker, depending on if we need him to tank or if he, we just need his blow-up DPS. And by the way, berserkers are just nasty DPS. But um, it seems to be that this game is centered on 15 to 30 seconds bursts. So, you know, we talk about the trash just being horrible. Part of the reason we think the trash has been horrible for a lot of people is you're not killing the trash in 15 seconds. People are rushing from group to group to group or body pulling another group so you can't reset and everybody doesn't have their cooldowns. What seems to work really effective, whether it be an impossible mission with a duo or whether it's a five-person dungeon, is... Always focus everything on that 15 to 30 seconds. Because if it goes past that 15 to 30 seconds, I'm not saying you're going to wipe. 
I'm just saying you're going to be in a lot of hurt and it's going to take a long time then. <laughs> there seems to be no medium in a fight. It's either boom, blow up, they're dead. Wait a couple, wait maybe a minute, go hit the next group, boom, blow up, they're dead. Wait another minute, keep going that way. Or you can just string and do a very long day. Yeah. So, I mean, I say I don't like to, you know, look at Russian stuff, but I did actually watch the raid, and the raid was actually that way also. It was like the fights are just realistically just boom, 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 boom. Lost streak. Bye, streak. No. Come back and see us. Oh, we just lost his picture. He's still here. So, you know, that's one of the things that we've been noticing. And has anybody else noticed that, or is it just that's what we've been finding? Streak, now that you're back. Uh, I, I, like I said, uh, we, I've been a little overpowered for some of these fights, so it's, it is it is kind of hard. But, you know, I'll say Nova, Nova mentioned in chat we ran a dungeon earlier um, I'm not sure if it was here yesterday. It all blurs together, but we had those little side quests that you get, and one of the ones was those little lurker dudes that spawn when you're <laughs> at like low health. And we got to the final boss where you do wave after wave after wave, and every time we would finish a wave, we would get like one or two of these lurker dudes that would spawn. So we're trying to fight the waves and the lurker dudes and everything else, and it, it was brutal. It was brutal. They they totally destroyed us. So if you get any of those lurker bosses, complete that quest before you get to the final boss so they don't spawn anymore. You know, they do seem to always spawn in an inconvenient time and in multiplicities of each other because there's nothing like doing a five-person dungeon. You know, you just get through a trash fight and then all of a sudden five lurkers pop on your butt and it's like, now you just wiped but the good thing is, there's no penalty for wiping except for you have to come back. So, I mean, I guess they take that in consideration. Well, <laughs> Three wards in a boss fight. <laughs> I was going to say, your fights can sometimes take five minutes. My penalty is five minutes lost, and i got to re-attempt that. <laughs> well, it's still, I still go back to the fact that you're probably playing it a little harder than you should. If your fight is taking, if you're fighting five minutes on one thing, you're you're above your difficulty, right now. Of course, impossible, man. Five man, impossible. <laughs> I will tell you this: never cue a pug in impossible mode, <laughs> because while you may be able to handle that, you're probably your two other pugs are going to be like half your health, you know. Just roll, just open up the class, has no skills, and you're going to be stuck there trying to carry these two in impossible mode, and it's not going to bode well. It's either going to be a long time or you're going to rage quit the bug group. Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about PvP. I know it's, it's a sore subject for a lot of people, and it's not that, you know, the people don't want to PvP. There seems to be a problem with queuing for PvP. I mean, on the first day or two of op early access, I queued like five times. And I never waited more than five minutes to queue. And I was like, oh, this is cool. This is easy. You know, this is easy sparks. I'm loving this. I'm just going to keep doing this. As you start raising prestige, it gets impossible to queue. I saw... I think it was Nova say earlier, the queues at 7.5k still won't pop. So, I mean, if you can't queue at 7.5, you think you're going to be able to queue. Hello, Spazoid, where are you going? Come here. Time to get attacked. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was his pretty much time saying, hey, don't go over time. Um, but, you know, it's like if you if you think about it, if it's not going to pop at 7.5, it's not going to pop at 8, 9, 10, especially when you start talking about, where are you at? Sorry. It's, I don't want to chew in a power cord. So the thing is, that goes back to 
PvP, while they say is a viable way to level, it's only viable if you can get people to actually queue for it. And I have four different PvP types to queue on, and I've tried all different four, and I can't get any of them to, you know, pop. And the bad thing is, is my stuff that levels my chapels stuff keeps popping on those PvP, so my chapels are falling behind. And it comes down to anybody who's pop on the PvP, it doesn't really matter the level now. It's just going to be, that's going to be the issue. Is, you know, we're going to have to wait until either more people start queuing it or you have to wait till it switches off of that. The other thing I did find out about those specialty items is if it pops on MSM, I don't have to do it at my level. That's one of the reasons why I, I don't mind running MSM and everything with everybody else. One, because I can do a 3,000 prestige MSM and still get my Oki tablet, for example. He can carry four of us, he means. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, come on. You got to admit, the 1,800 <laughs> sparks you get for me carrying you was pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm not complaining. So, yeah, that's also a very fast way to catch people up if they're not going to cap for the week. Hint, hint, anybody not capped? Get a group together and go run a couple MSMs and you'll cap in no time whatsoever. But anybody else got any more comments on PvP? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Streak. Look, I, I agree. A large part of, of the PvP issue is the, the prestige level and them trying to, to match people up. But I think it was easier to PvP earlier I think am I am I still on or did I lock up again? No, you're good. I hear you. You're good. Oh, sorry, sorry. Nobody was moving. You guys were staying like perfectly still. Um, I'm sorry. So when it first started off, it was easier to queue, and I think we we quickly found out that there's some serious balancing issues in PvP. There are certain classes that are just destroying the other classes. Berserker seems to be a big one right off the bat that these some of these classes it's just not very balanced well and, and again it's it's new they'll fix it they'll tweak it they'll make it better but right now the people that do want a pvp are a little frustrated that they going in with their classes and just they don't stand a chance and i think a lot of people are avoiding pvp because of that Get no sound, Deuce. Yeah, Deuce, you're just, you're just. Fired. I had my mute on. <laughs> I am sorry. Thank you for telling me because I would have talked forever. And I'm being... I was going to wait a few more minutes, but Gan was... spoke up. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it is very disheartening as a PvPer. I mean, I chose to go to Slayer immediately because, I mean, who doesn't like Assassin as a PvPer and stuff? And it, it is kind of disappointing. But the game does make up for it in other aspects, and I really do like grouping in this game. So, you know, it's just one of those things. I just have to entertain myself in other ways and stuff. I do want to throw a shout-out to Twist. Twist, thank you for your support. He is our uh, Final Fantasy guild leader, by the way. They are a great group. Check them out if you're looking for a game and you don't want to try us out in Skyforge and stuff. But then, like all things in Grievance... Every guild here is just a wonderful thing. And, you know, I know I'm not supposed to talk about grievance, talk about grievance, talk about grievance, but I got to throw a shout out to, you know, <laughs> the whole organization because, you know, one thing about this organization is, is, you know, the ad says itself Are you tired of guild shopping? Because I'll be honest with you, I never see a need to ever go anywhere else. You know, it's, it's just wonderful to be able to just go from game to game to game in that right stunner, Mr. Game Hopper. <laughs> the original. <laughs> the original hopper. But you know, it's just it's just one of those things. And, you know, as a community, it's always nice to see, you know, when we're when we're putting up our recruiting posts and stuff, and you see other guilds and stuff saying, Hey Grievance, good to see you in this game too. And it's true. A game pops up, Grievance will be there. 
So I get off my soapbox on that and <laughs> kind of throw out to the floor anybody in the channel that wants to ask any questions real quick before we do our final comments. Zollner, you know, I'll tell you, that's a wonderful thing, and I have to agree. You know, it seems like it doesn't matter if you're day one or 15 years in your organization. You walk into a channel, and people just make you feel welcome. Questions? Comments? Going once? You're all awesome. Going twice? Final thoughts. Ganamil. Uh, as usual, if you're not following us, you're following the links below. Check out our site. If you're new to the channel and you're not in the guild, we'd love to see you. Of course, you know, we're always expanding to people that are in the channel and off of the wait list trying to get in. Just be patient. We're doing it as fast as we can. You know, I'm still I, not in. So, yeah. yeah. Just be patient. We're doing it the best we can. Everybody's doing their part, accelerating missions when they can. And trust me, anybody that's in game, in guild, will tell you they are getting constant reminders daily check your missions other than that click the links below uh, see you on the forums Since before we go to you Strig to answer your question Twist I know me personally I'll never miss a get together again I mean they could pop it in I don't know why they would in Canada and I would still go probably because we have a large group from Canada that actually comes down um Gandamel, I, I know I've heard you say multiple times you'll be there again this next year. Oh, of course. Without a Strig, doubt. <laughs> Strig, you going to make it if, if your job doesn't interfere? Strig is going to do everything humanly possible to try to make it next year, yes. And Stunner, we know you don't have a choice. You're coming. <laughs> of course. Come on. If groups can come from clear across the ocean... Everyone can come. Everyone can come. <laughs> I mean... His his frequent flyer miles got to be huge just coming to the get-togethers. <laughs> Heck yeah! And I'll tell you, Twist, to comment on that one more thing. It was good to see you there for the first time, and I'm sure I'll see you there many other times after that. Twi Twist, the challenge is on. If this game's still going strong, I'm challenging you for the, uh, <laughs> the social media <laughs> award. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. They they have <laughs> they have a crazy group over there in Final Fantasy. I'll tell you that. Streak, final comments. Final comments. Hey, look, it, Skyforge is an awesome game, and, and i got to tell you guys, it's it's free. I mean, it costs you nothing to download it. It costs you nothing to play it. Um, if you're not playing it right now, you got to come check it out because, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. So come have some fun. Hang out with us. If nothing else, uh, give it a shot. Can't hurt. Don't cost you anything. Stunner? Grievous is your family. Come join us. <laughs> That's all you got. To, wait a second. That's all you got to say. Really, I Stutter? That's forever. it. Oh, I know you could talk forever. That's what I'm saying. That's all you're gonna say. I don't want to make the poor people have to deal with more ranting from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. You know, to add on to what Streak said, it's true. It's free. It, all, all it costs you is a download. And to add it on to everything else he said, who doesn't want to be a god? Come on. You know, give the game a shot. doesn't have to be your primary game. I mean, honestly, I'm one of those people who cap in a day and a half, two days. So it's, it's very possible to play this game and another game full time, actually. But if you did that, you would, you would miss out on all the craziness that goes on after you cap and stuff. But... You know, if there's any other questions, you know, join us in TeamSpeak. Just look for us under Skyforge tab. Somebody would be more than happy to help you there. You know, if you're not a Grievance member, you know, click the link below. Check us out as an organization, a wonderful, wonderful organization. I'm so glad I clicked that button, you know, two years ago because I've never looked back since. Everybody have a good night, and thanks for watching. Thank you.
Fancy Pig. I forgot to throw out a shout out to Everwinner. Shout out to Everwinner. <laughs> <laughs>